Hi, I'm Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy with Legacy Real Estate Services with FAQ Friday for today. It is April the 3rd, 2020, and as we are warming up outside, people are starting to ask the question. In fact, Maria has asked the question, what's the difference between evaporative cooling and refrigerated air? I'll be right back with the answers. All right, and we're back. It is uh, warming up here in El Paso as we get into April, and many of our tenants that have evaporative cooling are calling in to get their air conditioners converted, and Maria is an outsider, meaning that she's not from the desert southwest, and she doesn't know the difference between evaporative cooling and refrigerated air. And i got to tell you, Maria, that when I moved out here to El Paso 20 years ago, I didn't know what it was either. In fact, I can remember driving around El Paso and looking at the rooftops of homes and going, what's that box up on the top of the, of the house? And what that box was, was an evaporative cooler. Now, it's a very effective way to cool homes here in the desert southwest where essentially you've got a, a fan that's built inside a box and then on the sides of that box, you may have one opening or you might have four openings in which air is sucked through that opening through a medium, which might be a paper pad, it may be a cardboard pad, it may be straw, it may be a fiberglass pad, but they'll, you'll drip water through the pad and then the fan on the inside of the box will suck air through the pad add moisture to it and then blow it through your home and you've got to keep windows open somewhere in your home to get airflow and it cools the home by adding moisture to the home and creating airflow through there so that when the air hits your skin it feels cool and it cools your home off. Now the challenge with this is that when we get into June and early parts of July when the temperatures could be in the 90s to 100s these devices, these evaporative coolers, will only bring the temperature down about 60 degrees, excuse me, by 20 degrees, but in the cooler weather, it'll bring your home down easily into the 60 degree range, so for that reason, you've got to convert from heating to cooling sometimes, and that's not a good thing with evaporative coolers. Now, compared to a refrigerated air system, what refrigerated air is doing is they're taking the existing air that's inside the envelope of your home and they're recirculating that air over a cooling coil to make it cold and then blow it out through the vents. And typically that air is going to be anywhere from say 60 degrees to 70 degrees and then it blows it out to cool that, that air as it circulates throughout the home. But you're not taking outside air, introducing it to your home, and then blowing it out the windows. You're taking that existing air, closing the windows, closing the doors, and recirculating that air throughout the home in order to bring it down. Now, I've jokingly said since 2005, when I converted my home from evaporative cooling to refrigerated air, I've jokingly said that refrigerated air saved my marriage because my wife became comfortable, and by the way, so did I, when we converted to refrigerated air. It was more predictable, it was more comfortable, and because when the temperatures got up into the 100 degree mark, we could still bring the temperature of our home down into the 70s and make it much more comfortable. If you've got questions about how this affects you in your home purchase or sale, please call me because it does affect you here in our local market today and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about it. And you can reach me by putting a comment down below. You can text me at 915-588-1850 or you can call me on that same number. Email me, patrick at patricktuttle.com and I'd be happy to visit with you about refrigerated air versus evaporative cooling, the benefits, the cons, and how you can cure it and how I can be of service to you. Thanks for watching. God bless you and make it a great day. Bye-bye.